click. Alrighty, welcome to the PSB as that's the place position podcast. I'm your host, Coach EPS, and bye, boys. My coach here is Andrew Arenas, double is. Now, yes. hang on, before you give the introduction here, now we do a countdown before we start. You start at six, right? Yeah. And I was thinking, like, the movie uh, Monsters Inc., when the guy he counts down to, like, I think seven, or was it ten? The guy who has, like, ten figures before, like, oh, yeah. At Monsters Inc. starts. Mm hmm. That's what I'm kind of thinking. I forgot how many fingers he had. It must have been ten. Yeah, that because that was the joke. He had more than five fingers on one hand. Man, wouldn't that be? I guess that's like his only use. Like, <laughs> how am I gonna scare kids? I don't know. Unless he puts some like little scary finger puppets on his hand. I mean, I guess. he must have been really good at Monsters University or whatever he did. Oh yeah, typing Probably. and doing work and all. Yeah. I guess so. He must have majored in uh, computer science. <laughs> and job of Monsters Inc. Yeah, you can really count with that many fingers. Like when you're in an exam, you can count with like your two hand, two regular hands. Like, man, you know, I need to count with ten. <laughs> ten. So obviously, he probably has ten toes too. Uh, maybe on each foot, but I don't know. There's all sorts of weird stuff happening in Monsters Inc. The questions of the Monsters Inc. universe. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, but this is episode fifty of the PSBS. Yeah, we actually uh, surprisingly have so, uh, like a question about like looking forward into fifty. So we'll we'll answer that later. Ooh, some, so we got some viewer mail for our big fifty episode. Um, yeah, some good ones. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We don't have anything extravagant planned for this episode. Like we like we were maybe considering, but you yeah, know, no, because it, it, it's just uh, ethics wise, and then. Uh, things how they could have worked out you know especially with this timing of which i may have these because you had the week off but i didn't unfortunately mm-hmm. and um i was just kind of out with friends today and i just didn't think that with all the time zones and confusing stuff uh couldn't work out but we are still open for people to be a participant in the show in some way yes um you know, because it's been quite a while at this point since we've had a guest. And I, I, I feel like that itching is coming, uh, especially soon once, uh, you know, new games come out, like The Division, which I can't mm-hmm. play. So, you know, we're going to need some other players who will, other players or whoever friends of ours or, you know, even a new person that listens to this and uh, sends me something, then I'll look into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, because even for those, like, specific episodes, I mean, who knows, maybe I won't even appear uh there so i mean that'd be great so then i could listen to it on the side end uh, sure. which is which would be interesting so we'll see uh it'll definitely help yeah so you there listening you can be on this show very easy we keep it simple you know yeah, exactly you can keep up with us yeah it's just gonna really pertain to you know any kind of new releases because you know i can't get to them anymore so. yeah we can't vouch for every game that comes out yeah but, I mean, you're able to keep up, and, you know, I think there's other people out there that could keep up as well, so um, it'll help. Yeah. Great. Or, you know, if, like, an anime game comes out and, like, neither of us play, and we're just <laughs> like, ah, don't know. Uh, yeah, either that, too, or whatever other kind of games that maybe don't get mentioned because, you know, there's definitely maybe a section that doesn't, but. Yeah, because I saw that, like, the new Naruto game came out this week, and I saw the reviews oh. were good for it, so. Oh, uh, man. Looks- I don't know if that was like a well. I saw one review in particular, and it was it was bad. And I just don't know if that was like just that outlet, or if most people don't like it. I don't know. I'm still never gonna play like in my teen day and like my teen days when I'd be at like a youth center playing those games. Ugh. Mm. Man, those and then the Dragon Ball Z games. Don't get those Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, the uh, Budokai Taikaichi nope. Three. Nope. <laughs> no, just Budokai 3. Not the Tenkaichi. Once I got the Tenkaichi, I hate those games. <laughs> why you don't know why you hate the Kaichi? I hate it because when they got to that game, they made it into a 3D fighter. I don't like 3D. I like that. I kind of like it. It's cool. 3D fighters are fine if you're playing by yourself, like doing the campaign by yourself. But when you play locally, which is mostly what you do in fighting games, it I hate it. Like I hate that there's a split screen when you get too far away. And you're running around, and she's like, no, I like... It's like the Lego games when you're playing it. Yeah, it's like the Lego games, exactly. So, no, I want, like, I like a 2.5 fighter, you know, where it's yeah. 2D, but you can kind of swirl around the enemy if you know the moves right. I just like the openness, like, I'm able to have more room fighting. I mean, and... yeah, it's 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 more like the show that way, but 
still, no, I prefer a 2.5 fighter. I don't really care for 3D fighters. Yeah, it's a, it's a matter of preference. The I mean, that's fighters... what all of them are now, anyways. Yeah, the only 3D fighter I liked was War of the Monsters. War of the Monsters was a 3D fighter. <laughs> um, what was another? Um, was none of the Godzilla games you gave a damn about? I never played those Godzilla games. <laughs> Oh my god, they're so good. Or the Monsters of the Big Bang. That was, that <laughs> like was the one 3D fight I loved. Yeah. Those were the days, man. Yeah, the rest die. I don't know. I didn't like the Dragon Ball 3D fighters and all that, but... But anyway. Anyways, let's get to the news. News, yes, news. Um, where to start? It's a lot of stuff. We'll, we'll go small and work way up. So... Um... Telltale announced today that the Wolf series thing, uh, Michonne special, whatever, episode one is releasing on February 23rd. So uh, towards the end of this month, we'll get episode one. And the plan is to have episode one. Yeah, the plan is to have episode one this month, episode two in March, and then episode three in April. So a one month gap between the episodes. Really, so Minecraft was an indication that maybe now they want to. Do it. It'll keep on going. Keep it. Yes. Keep actually, it have have actual like real goals and production times, and not keep people hanging for months at it. You know, I, I, it was always like part of me was the speculation that again, like I had stated in the past, that maybe once you know they got like craft deals or whatever, and that probably they were okay. We don't want any of this like between BS that you guys keep pulling here. Um, apparently not. I mean. That's of a succession as Minecraft, but I mean, let's take into consideration there's only three episodes. Yep. Um, but the fifth episode of Minecraft hasn't come out yet. Six, then you get episode five. Oh, yeah, but I want to be surprised. The disc no. is already out. No. All it has to take is the patch. We'll see. But, um, the I mean, interesting. The, yeah, walk, uh, Walking Dead, Michelle. Yes, so you get to play as an actual character from the comics and TV show. It bridges that gap, right? Yes. That, because the games do take place in the comic book universe, not the TV show universe. Mm-hmm. And that's what they said. You play as her during a specific moment. You're not playing a specific moment in the comics. You're playing like what she was doing during a specific moment in the comics. Now, this leaves me worried here. As someone who hasn't read the comics, uh, I mean, am I going to be lost on this character? Am I even going to care? Well, I mean, you play through Game of Thrones with no context, so. But those are new characters. They're, they are, but they're the established world, and you're able to get around it. I mean, with this one, you just kind of play as this character, but I mean. I mean, I mean it is, it's like the 400 days thing, I guess, you know, right? I mean, yeah. A little bit. You just like accept that this character is also a survivor of the apocalypse. <laughs> See, this is like my best description of the show. Um, she has like a machete. He has a sword. Oh, sword, excuse me. See, it's just a little, you know, it has a sword. Um, she's lived this long. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> well, I mean, the game will probably give some context to her character, but... Um, I hope so. Like, in the beginning, a little bit, or something? Yeah. Cause, I mean, there are people like you who just doesn't, who doesn't watch or watch, who doesn't watch or read any of the stuff, any of the properties that these games are based on, but you still go and, and play the Telltale game. Well, yeah, I mean, because, you know, I don't care much for the show at all. And, I don't, uh, well, I mean, I could care for the comics. It's just, I never got around to it. But, yeah, the show. Yeah, but I'm just, not talking just Walking Dead. I mean, everything. Like, oh. don't, I mean, you're not, you don't, you don't watch any Game of Thrones stuff and you play the nope. Game of Thrones game. You don't watch any Walking Dead stuff, but you play the nope. Walking Dead game. You don't play Minecraft. Well, did you, you play Minecraft? Play the, I mean, I didn't play Minecraft Story Mode, but yeah, I don't play Minecraft, but I'll probably plan on playing the Minecraft Story yeah. Mode. Yeah. I mean, you play Borderlands, but you're not super into Borderlands, but you still play Yeah, Tales. like, I never beat a Borderlands game until Tales of the Force. <laughs> yeah. It's like this curse, but maybe once uh, the Marvel stuff and DC stuff comes out, then that's something I'm, like, totally invested in, you know? You're like, yes, I know this I'm property going into it. Yeah, well, yeah, fully know it. Yeah, good point. I mean, just about all of them. Um, I mean, back to the future, I know, but, I mean, that's before, that's before Telltale's heyday. Yeah. Wolf Among Us. I mean, you know, that was a prequel, so, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but they actually did a new Fable comic that is more tied to the Telltale game. Yeah, yeah, they did that, yeah. Um, so that either, too. 
So, you know, Tesla's just taking those properties and introducing them to me. And you no, know, even after, I still don't. <laughs> um, you don't. You're not. You, you still don't even care to look more into it. You're just like, eh, I still well, don't want to watch Game of Thrones. Because like I get like my like a length of a Telltale game is like oh not even a full season. <laughs> um, never mind. <laughs> Uh, yeah, full season is longer than a Telltale game. Well, game of Thrones is a long game, but... Yeah, because I mean, Game of Thrones is only 10-hour seasons. Yeah, for the t- TV show. Oh, then in that case, maybe the game is actually longer than the season. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, each hour episode is like an hour and a half, too. I mean, yeah. the game basically has really no walking around and exploring. So... Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Like, if I recall, like I said, episode six of Game of Thrones, I believe there's actually no walking uh, segment. Yeah, I think it's all. Yeah, you can play that game with one hand. (laughs) Like, you don't even need the analog stick. It's pretty remarkable. Well, yeah, you need the analog stick to do, like, the direct stuff. But I digress. I'm excited for Walking Dead nonetheless. I'll check it out. Um... If people out there haven't played season two, if they redeemed it or whatever, get to. Mm, well, uh, you know, it'd be kind of strange how they didn't mention that. You just I assume mean, it, that everyone already has it already, and that. that I don't know. I mean, it says help. the Michonne standalone thing. It says standalone, so I don't know if you need. They're that. doing a stream on Sunday, so on Valentine's Day. So we'll see. What, uh, we'll see if you. Still... I'm sure somebody on the Twitch chat will ask about that, so uh, they'll probably have that answered. You need season two, but now this new update they didn't mention anything about needing season two to play. Yeah, um, we'll see. Yeah, because like I said, I played season two on PS3, and I didn't really bother wanting to buy season two again on PS4, but then it's free replacement plus, so I have it. But you, you still haven't played it. So. You didn't play the PS4 version. No, I didn't play uh, the PS4 season. version. I didn't no feel... platinum didn't get you. Well, there's no platinum season two. Yeah. It's like I don't know. We talked about this last last week or two. Like, should trophies matter? And I'm like, well, I mean, this is different. This is a game I've played already. You know, so it is part of the incentive. Like, there is no platinum, so there isn't that extra incentive to play it again. You know. Yeah. It's not like I'm not playing at all. Those get both those trophies. I mean, yeah, and then you, you know, I was I was interested, legitimately interested in actually like going back, but for season two, even though people don't like season two. Yeah, and that was also in the uh, in the mm. early, uh, announcement they were saying about how season three of The Walking Dead is in deep development, but no details. Wow. Yeah, no mm. details were released until after the Michonne uh, snoff is done. It's in deep development. Deep. And then yeah. odds are they will have a schedule for these episodes, actually. So, so yeah. Um, any, uh, I mean, I don't know an ETA. Uh, well, of course we don't know, but like an ETA on season three, I would maybe say late summer, early fall. Yeah, I mean, if it's in deep development, what they might do is like at the end of episode three of the spinoff, there might be some little tease for season three, you know? I hope so. Like, just to get you excited, like, oh, season three, you know, whoa, this, and then it's coming, like you said, uh, in the fall or late summer. Or at least online, you know, the trailer dropping. Or something. Mm-hmm. And then we'll see if my, my, not prediction really, but just uh, my hope of Clementine coming back. <laughs> I don't know. I just think, I just think she's happen. done. I think her story's We're going to see. We're going to see. We'll see. Uh-huh. And then, oh, man, that'll be the day. And, like, we uh, do not get a Clementine and Daryler for, like, a, a hat or, like, any kind of reference to her at all. Then, uh, then I know it's done. But then if, it, if there is, then I was right. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because in the first season two teaser thing, they let you know right away Clementine is here, you know. Yeah, she's older. So, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But, um... I was gonna say. <laughs> great, great. No, uh, when the new IP is coming, I'd rather have that first than that man. Yeah, the we haven't heard it. We haven't had an update on that. They said it was like their most ambitious thing, and we haven't any update on that. 
it's too ambitious. That's why it's taking a long time. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see, but I mean, Batman's supposed to be this year, or at least starting this year. Because shoot, man. I mean, if if, if uh, you know, if it's if it possibly has an upgrade engine, then I would love that to be integrated with like Batman afterwards. No. Yeah. Or or Marvel because I guess Mar- Marvel's after. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Marvel's going to be on whatever new engine they make because Marvel is not supposed to be till like 2017 next year. Yeah. Oh yeah. By then. Huh? Yeah, that was just. Oh my god, I just couldn't believe they said, "Oh, we're working on a Marvel game. We'll be out till 2017." You know, two years from now. And I'm just like, okay. And then yet. Yeah, the press release is so weird, right? You know, you just have like the Marvel logo, and that's it. Like that's there was it, nothing. Yeah. But at least with the Batman one, you got like a different kind of Batman logo. You yeah. Got, like, no, oh, yeah, when they announced Batman, like, no, Batman is coming like next year. Within the next twelve mm-hmm. months, you're gonna we're gonna have this out, or at least the first episode. But like with Marvel, it was just very t- call to investors kind of thing, you know, just like or whoever. I mean, I don't know many people who are investing in Telltale, but you know, just you know, it was a very business kind of thing, and I didn't feel like it was a. <laughs> Answer because you're not going to be thinking about it. Like I don't think about it too much. Like man, what's what's Telltale's Marvel game going to be? I'm I'm worried. I'm not worried. Um, I'm focusing on their other products, like you know, Captain America: Civil War, the Netflix series. Oh, and did you see like this crazy? Not theory, but like just assumption that this Telltale series would be MCU canon. That, never... That's entirely possible, but I, I mean, uh... it's possible, but I. Kind of doubt it um, because of the branching paths. Because of branching paths, and I mean, it's not like you know, because they're like, because one guy said, I mean, not one guy, but like there was this theory going around, one like guy. this it one meant- guy, this one guy said this one thing. No, like no, there was this theory, like a lot of people were kind of thinking, like, what if you know, because like that's the cool thing to reboot comic series and stuff like that. Mm. Like when Marvel was doing the Secret Wars thing, everybody thought, oh, what if they reboot it? And the, all the comics they produce are now canon to the MCU. So now all the comics and all the movies are in one giant universe. Good lord. I'm like, that would be dense as hell. And nobody... Well, I mean, It's going to take the time. I mean, it's a lot. Someone would, but like, it's too much to keep with. You know? Yeah, and that would really hinder creativity on both ends as a comic writer and as the film writer to kind of like have all this stuff be canon and have to kind of acknowledge it in some way you know it's or just, not or if it's just lightly like the Netflix series yeah but I don't know because I mean it's just kind of like but then again that's far in between you look at something like Captain America where they're putting out monthly comics like you know how many comics they put out in between Captain America movies you know, for them to kind of have to kind of like acknowledge some of that, like in the movie, just be like, oh, yeah, I went and fought this guy and this guy and this guy, and I went to the negative zone and I came back, and now I'm different. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's a lot. And I mean, as far as would this Marvel game be in the MCU, I, I doubt it, just because, like mm-hmm. you said, branching past, because already Marvel Studios is trying really hard to establish this strong continuity. There are films. This is the continuity. This is the timeline. Um, oh, because and there's a lot of demand for like, oh, Age of Ultron, give us a director's cut, you know, or yeah. um, Thor: The Dark World. There was rumored director's cut for that one too, and we didn't get director's cut for either. And I feel the reason we didn't get director's cut is because when you have two versions of a film that exists in a larger universe, it kind of becomes this question of like, oh, well, which one's the canon one, you know? Or hell, for even like one individual film that's getting a sequel, it's like, oh, then like the I Am Legend example, even yeah. though I Am Legend 2 is not really happening. It's like, oh, what's it going to be based off of the director's cut or the, well, really just an alternate ending or the <laughs> regular one. So it's like even for a regular standalone movie it's difficult yeah, yeah it's difficult. <laughs> so i can't imagine one with like a bunch yeah because that was yeah so it's the same situation where like it's just hard to kind of have people decide which version of it's canon so they're just like no there has to be one version that is the canon version so it's kind of the same thing with this game it's like with branching past it's kind of hard to do something that's kind of your own path and still like be canon with the universe like like oh sorry spider-man's dead because Bob out there killed him in the Telltale game. You know, some dude just oh, playing man. the game. He's not going to forget that. Not going to forget that, you know. Um, uh, the only example of something I can remember, like, picking an ending was, like, 
Evil Dead recently picked the ending. Um, because, like, well, there's always this thing about whether or not it's canon or not. But, uh, like, the Ash, uh, Ash versus Dead TV series takes place after the movies. And, like, Army of Darkness had, like, three different endings. <laughs> and it was all based on, like, what region you lived in. It was, like, which, which, which different ending? ending for a region. Yeah, like, if you're in the UK, you got, like, this post-apocalyptic ending. And if you got, like, in the US, he just went back to his normal time and that was it. Um, so there was always this, like, which ending is canon? And then when the show hit, it was like, sorry, the one, the regular one, the one in the U.S. That's the <laughs> well, U.S. knows it best. Well, I mean, it was the easier end, the one where he just goes back to his normal time and it's and it's kind of done. But then the other alternate ending, he like lives, he like oversleeps and he wakes up in the apocalypse and it's crazy and it's like, um, yeah, we're not doing that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> He'll sleep through the apocalypse. Um. Yeah, America gets everything right. We get the no. We don't how to say dates correctly. <laughs> you say it. You say it month, day, and year. Not, not day, day month, month year. year. That's just ridiculous. That's <laughs> yeah. But you have to read it like you have to read it like the twelfth of November. That's how you have to read it. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. You say it month, day, year. November. That's how it works. That's how it goes. <laughs> Yeah. I'm calling for because you know I'm already calling for like the all English movement. Now I'm calling for it all. <laughs> yeah. English is well, the best of, language. Well, I mean that's the thing too. Like when you get into international marketing, it, it does lead to some confusion because like like Mass Effect Three. I remember when oh. that game came out, there was like an international trailer, and at the end of the trailer it said nine, three, um, twelve or whatever year that game came out, and a lot of people doubt like, oh, did the game get delayed? It's coming out September now. And it's like, no, no, it's still coming out in March. It's just that's an international trailer. So it's the 9th of March. Oh, my God. Instead of, you know, we would read it March 9th. And the trailer is like the 9th of March. So everybody thought the game got delayed. <coughs> well, yeah, I had when I had lived in Japan, I had to learn how to read the dates like that to know what games were coming out or like movies. And I mean, yeah, people are just they're confused. <laughs> Great. I mean, you don't have to live in Japan for three years. to know that. But. You can yeah. do a Google search. Just put just put the word of just put the word of in there. It, it helps. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah. But yeah. Anyways. Anyways. What do we have next? What else we got? Some news. Um. Oh, so it was confirmed this past week that Titanfall Two will have a single player campaign. Excellent. Good. Um. Now, to what extent? No details on that. Just saying that there will be single player campaign experience for the sequel. Uh, experience. Okay, okay. I hope not on the lines of Battlefront, but okay. Move on. But uh, and the game has a, a window of between late to late 2016 or early 2017. Uh, you're gonna see here a theme, guys, of a lot of windows for games. Windows That's for games. Yeah. Like, yeah. Windows for games. I mean, not games. For windows but windows <laughs> like a, game a big windows. old window uh, uh to see what games are going to be released but this is one of them so. well obviously they're trying well ba- they well the like i said the first report with the campaign thing said that yeah they're aiming for a, either late 2016 or early 2017 but then mcfarland toys put out their toys saying release it for the toys is winter 2016 mm. so the toys obviously want to try to tie in with the game so you would think late 2016 um, here's the thing about this. Oh. So, it's EA, and yes, it's the game's EA. coming to all platforms this time, Titanfall 2. Uh, well, I mean, just Xbox One and PS4 and PC. We, that's all the current game platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, you just make sure because somehow, I for still, for some reason, take PS3 and Xbox 360 and the account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there was a 360 version of Titanfall. Yeah, like we keep getting Xbox 360 versions of stuff, but I think EA is pulling the brakes now. Yeah. They know. The Activision point. doesn't, but EA knows. Yeah. But, um. Anyways. anyways, yeah. So, I don't know. I think. I mean, obviously, I think this would be a big title for EA. I just don't know if it's really going to come out. If they want to put it out in late 2016 or maybe early 2017. Because here's the thing we know also that the new Battle of Fields coming out this year, too. Yeah. I feel and fun. Call of Duty. And Call of Duty. But I mean, like, strictly just through EA's point of view. Like, EA is already putting out a big online <laughs> competitive shooter this fall. 
with um, Battlefield Five. Um, yeah, so I just like, don't know. You know if EA, yeah, I don't know if EA wants to compete with itself by putting out two big online shooters in the fall. You know, and then better yet, you know, even bumping Titanfall Two, like to the spring area or winter area. Mm -hmm. I don't even. I hope that benefits it still. I mean, I know Battlefield Hardline was a different situation, but like a Battlefield Hardline, it got bumped and it didn't really help. But it's a different situation, right? Like, yeah, Titanfall Two is now more hotly anticipated. It's going to be on more systems, and it's got it's got more of a. I mean, well, Battlefield Hardline turned in to have a lot of hype behind it too, but this one's going to have like even more. So I just hope it doesn't enter the same fate somehow because, you know, it got pushed and it's just, ah, uh, well, you know, you know all these other three shooters that you're playing from the fall? Well, uh, we'll give you Titanfall 2. Yeah. I think, it's just almost I mean, not the last thing. Yeah, I mean, that's what kind of what I'm just saying is that I don't think both of those games are going to come out in the fall. Like, Absolutely. one of the two is going to get bumped to 2017, or early 2017. It can't be like a December game either because no. I mean, December games just lately haven't been, you know, taking off. No, I mean, it'll probably be Titanfall 2 because, I mean, the toys can still come out like late, like in December 2016. They still start putting the toys out, even though the game won't come out until probably February, maybe March. You know, I got no question about the toys. It's just the game. Yeah. It's just the games, the, the toys were just kind of like a lot of people were running a news story about like that as an indicator that they're aiming for 2016 because the toys are coming out in 2016. Mm. Um, but I mean, yeah, I'm just saying though, they can put out the toys in like December 2016, even though the game will come out to like January or February. Because um, Titanfall 1 came out in like March of whatever year. Um, so I mean, that's still, they know that that, that, that time frame works for Titanfall because they've already done it, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's my prediction they're going to show Titanfall 2 off at E3 obviously yeah, they will yeah they will yeah, um, have the demo oh man I can't wait to see it you know whether or not they give a window at that time they might just say fall 2016 and then never give an actual date and then say oh no it's coming in March you know and so now he's not really like a delay yeah yes it's one of those now undercover delays yeah where, where it's like, like no we never said it was coming out in November but it's so it's not really a delay because we never set a set in stone a date Exactly. So, so we'll see, and then of course Battlefront Five will come out um, November yeah. most likely. Oh, Battlefield. Well, maybe October. Yeah, Battlefield. Sorry. I mean, there is five Battlefront games, but <laughs> no. we're going to get Battlefront Two next next year, probably fall fall twenty seventeen. Yeah. Tie in with that episode eight of Star Wars. If it doesn't get delayed again, episode eight of Star Wars will not get delayed. Better not. No. So movies rarely get delayed, especially some big thing like this. They they it yes, technically it did get delayed, but that was more for like marketing reasons because like, oh December did really well, so let's put out the next one in December, you know? Yeah, because I always found it strange if Star Wars has come out. What was the original day for? Like May. May twenty seventeen. I mean like that's not even like some I mean, like, you know, people are not out of school and like all that and at least most well, people. traditionally, all the Star Wars movies have been released in May. Episode Seven was the first one to get released in December, and it made a crap ton of money. So, so Disney's kind of thinking, well, maybe we can stick to December because that's doing really well for us. Because maybe aside from maybe if like maybe the Han Solo movie to come out in December, you know, maybe well not December, like in May, then that's fine. But I mean, Rogue One's coming out in December. I feel like it's they should get a trailer for that movie, but that's okay. It's the Christmas tradition now. You're going to get a Battlefront in November. You're going to get a main Star Wars film in Christmas. So, If I get a Battlefront in November. <laughs> I'm not saying this November. I'm saying like every time we get a main Star Wars yeah, movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll get a Battlefront. But it's going to have to take my great approval to get Battlefront 2 from EA. Because mm. I did not purchase Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, speaking of Star Wars Battlefront, though. Oh, great. Well, what more about Star Wars no, You just reminded me. Uh, they are doing double <laughs> XP for Battlefront this weekend, so I'm going to be jumping back into Battlefront this weekend to get that double XP. Uh, I mean, is it just... Dumb? Because this is the thing that's been pissing me off lately about these multiplayer games. It's like, oh, they want to, like, 
hide it with like a different kind of double XP. It's not like actual like leveling XP, but it's like for your guns and like classes and stuff. So this is just straight up just no. This is XP. Like Stars Battlefront don't have like gun XP and all that. Now I haven't really been up to date on any of the season pass stuff, but has anything been released of it yet? Um, I don't think season pass. The first season pass content has been put out yet, but there has been an update recently that added like. Um, I think a new map and like some new modes on uh, on some of the other maps are already there. Mm. So now you can play a certain map in different modes. I mean, the matchmaking in Battlefront's at least like really solid. So I hope mm-hmm. like whenever these expansions come out, that you know it integrates the add-on content correctly yeah. in your matchmaking. But yeah. It's good thing you brought it up because I almost forgot about the double XP because I do want to get back into it uh, this week. Get 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 it on that double XP. Because someone was asking me about like how the COD, not uh, well, COD, uh, Black Ops Three DLC integrates with it, but I was like, man, don't even ask me. Like, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, but before you would be like, yeah, yeah, ask me about it. But, like, as you know, I'm behind on Call of Duty, so nonetheless, Black Ops Three. So you know, it's just. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think I'll really get back into it. No. Because today, it was confirmed that, yes, there's Call of Duty this year, and it's by Activision. Big surprise. So, there you and go. It's called, and it's called Call of Duty 2016. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, at this point, they might as well be the 2K, right? <laughs> but they can't take the name 2K because 2K will be pissed and probably no. sue Activision. No, it's not actually called that. That was just a joke. But um, that's how they do yes. refer to it in the um, what they the call press it. release. Yes, the stock hearings or whatever, whatever they call it. Uh, but it's basically confirmed. I mean, you know, some people's twist the turns, be like, "Oh, maybe it's a sledgehammer." I'm like, guys, look at history here. Sledgehammer <laughs> did their game two years ago. Well, more than a year ago. But now it's Infinity Wars time. It's their time. It's um, our time. What, it's our it, time. <laughs> yeah, it's either for their time to shine or their time to get sh- shit on again. But we'll see. Infinity Ward never says die. Yeah, they, they'll never die. They just sit there and watch the Goonies for inspiration when they make it right before they start making a game. Like, this is our time. <laughs> Maybe there's other things that need to be taking inspiration from, but <laughs> we'll see. I'm excited uh, when this is <clears throat> mm-hmm. But I've already said that. Well, a dozen times. Anyways, what's the next thing? Many a times before. Um, doo, doo, doo. What else we got? Oh, this is neat. I actually saw this on one website, but I didn't see anyone else reporting it. So I'm sure it's true. I hope so. You know, um, generally you need at least three sources, but that's okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, you need at least three sources. Uh, but no, I, I really only saw like one website reporting this. Uh, apparently... Um, Sony has a Sonic the Hedgehog movie planned for 2018. A Sonic the Hedgehog movie? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, technically there's already been a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, an animated movie. Yes. Um, um yeah. Now, I, I, guess I would take it this is animated, I'd hope. Oh, I'm I'm rereading the report because this is probably why a lot of people haven't run it yet because it was never like in a press release. It was through an interview with uh, Sega CEO uh, confirms that the project. Oh, the new the new Sega CEO that we talked about months ago. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. His interview saying okay. that yeah, he says uh, Sonic Hedgehog movie scheduled for 2018 partnership with Sony Pictures. Um, it says, yeah, a hybrid CG animated live action film. Oh, good. No. Oh. Yeah. I'm not even going to talk about, like, how all sorts are wrong that is. Oh. <laughs> uh, no. I, 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 I'm done. Everyone, keep going. Tell the people, but I keep just, going. No, no. Yeah, it just says, yeah, it says, uh, <sighs> yeah, CG live action hybrid. They got writers on board. Um, it just has their name. Any, anyone where from Notable of Worth that maybe Notable um, is attached? T- Hybrids is written by Even Souser and Van Rupture. I don't know. It doesn't say what their uh. Listen, I don't know. It doesn't know. say what their filmography is, so I don't know. It's just their names. I mean, I mean, uh, no director. No, no director yet. No, no sign of promise there either. Uh, 
I don't know. I mean, it, it might be because, you know, I don't actually really like Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, I like Sonic Heroes. Sonic but, Heroes. Heroes. But other than Sonic Heroes, I mean, like I've said many a times, again, I never liked the original game. I understand its historical significance, but I never liked it. Uh, I don't really like many of the characters in Sonic. And uh, sure, I watched the movie when I was a kid, but like I didn't know any better. Spent a lot of time in the Sega arcades in Japan. You know, like they had like little <laughs> big old Sega uh, game amusement parks that were like indoors. But other than that, I mean, I, I, I just really don't like Sonic. And this movie just doesn't sound right. And there are other ways where I would say it, but it's just going to drag on too long. But yeah, I, don't I think mean, it's my breath. But, I mean, if it's even real, but I, I mean, I believe you, but. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, it was just on this one uh, website, ComingSoon.net, their movie website, and it was just said based on an interview. And they do mention writers, so they actually have like people working on it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, a live action CG hybrid. It sounds like well, it sounds like it's going to be like um, what was it, the Sonic cartoon from two thousand three? Sonic X. No, not Sonic X. It was the <laughs> or was it Sonic X? The cartoon. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Sonic X. Okay, I don't know if it was called Sonic X or Sonic or. Sonic. I don't know how I know this crap more. <laughs> oh yeah, Mister Mister. I don't know. I don't like Sonic, but yet you corrected me <laughs> on uh. On the well, series. I just know. That doesn't mean I like it. <laughs> yeah, because that that show dealt with like, oh, here's a human kid, and he like opens a wormhole or some crap, and then Sonic and all his friends pop in through through their universe into his, and then they kind of live there. Well, yeah, it's, that's Sonic X. Yes, yeah, Sonic. Sonic X. Do, 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 do. Had a yeah. good theme song too. <laughs> but um, so yeah, probably something like that. Um, Ooh. hopefully not the uh oh god the Final Fantasy esque thing they did with the Sonic reboot thing. <sighs> Stop! No. <laughs> uh. I'm getting flashbacks. Completely forgot about this game, and then I had, and then I had a friend play it. Like, just like he wanted to see how bad it was because he got it for like a dollar at GameStop. It's um, not the worst thing ever made. So, and like I just, I'm just watching the opening cutscene, and I'm like, for the first ten minutes, you can swear there's a Final Fantasy game because you don't see anything that Sonic. remotely looks like Sonic. It's all you know. Hyper- well, you see Doctor Eggman. Well, you well n- wait. So for the first five minutes, it's just all you know, uh, realistic CG humans, and there's this big like. F- parade and fireworks and stuff and this looks like final fantasy and then eggman shows up and he's hyper realistic and i'm like wait what like you're like hmm and then you're like even then it's just kind of like wait is this sonic no that can't be sonic this is final, this is still final fantasy right and then nope a big blur keeps running around it feels so out of place and you're just like what this is a final fantasy this is sonic the hedgehog what the hell it's Sonic who looks super cartoony and just stupid. Yeah, and this hyper realistic cutscene. And then once you actually cut to the main game, the main game has like crap visuals or nothing even remotely like what you saw in that opening cutscene. Nope. So yeah, it's just <sighs> crazy game. So hopefully I guess it's more like Sonic X and not uh that Sonic game. Moral of the story is bring Sonic Heroes to PS4 via PS2 yes, Classics. PS2 Classics, yeah, get that Sonic Heroes, man. And it better have a platinum. Oh, yeah, yes. can, have that, can have that theme oh, song. Actually. Sonic Heroes. Great. I mainly played it on GameCube, but I mean, I wouldn't mind playing it with DualShock 4. So I, mean, I would be excited if that actually happened. But in summary, I don't like Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like Sonic so, Cheeseburgers, though? Uh, I mean, really, all I eat at Sonic is just the chicken. The chicken? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the burgers are great. Don't get me wrong, but I like the uh, burgers. I'll probably have the burgers this time. But <laughs> the only thing I hate is that freaking um, it, my, the Sonic is a little far from. Mm. It's a little out of the way. Well, yeah, it's a little out of the way, which sucks. But anyways, anyways, um, let's see what else we got. Oh, here's something. It has been confirmed that um, the division is getting an open beta later this month. Oh, an open beta. Open beta. So anyone can access it. 
Uh, it'll be running February 19th through the 21st. And if you're playing on Xbox One, you get to play a day early on February 18th. Ooh, a day early. Yes, a day early. <laughs> a 24-hour access. But, oh, it's um, like the PS4, like all the other stuff that they get. But Oh, yeah, the one-day early access. But um, but this is cool. You know, this is great. Uh, so more so now everybody can try it and they can do, you know, actually server tests and um, kind of fill out more of the like dark zone areas and the main game itself, you know? What was it? Uh, it's like Evolve with the stress test? Yeah, the stress or test. Or no, technical, no, technical test. Technical test, yeah. Um, because this is good. This is obviously something they need to do. They need to make sure the servers are can handle everything. You don't want games crashing on day one. And then especially with the, in the PC version with the exploits. Yes, get around those exploits. Um, here's the funny thing, too. So I played the closed beta, and I deleted the closed beta, and they said in this thing saying, oh, if you have the closed beta, don't delete it, because you can just update it, and it'll be compatible with the open beta. I'm like, shit. <laughs> oh. So, so what'd you do? No, I, I, re- I deleted it before I read that. So I have to... I mean, I guess to go re-download it. I don't know. I mean, are you really going to... Yeah. yeah, I mean, I played the closed beta and I had a lot of fun with it. I just, you know, I've already talked. Are you gonna play it some more? I mean, maybe, but it's just because they did say in the open beta they're adding in another story mission to the beta. So if you play the closed beta, there is a little bit more content. Um, plus, there's certain aspects that are open during the open beta. Like, um, well, it's hard to explain if you haven't played it, but like, there's like this like medical wing that has like different parts of it. And different parts of the unlock, and you get different like perks and upgrades. So, like more of those will be open during the open beta. Ooh. So, there are some new things there. Um, but no, it's just one of those things where it's like uh, I don't know if I want to play it again. Not because I don't want to. It's just you know if we've talked about this, where you kind of don't want to get burned out on the beta before the main game comes out. You know. I mean, the division is all online. It's not like there's a single player campaign. There is a single player campaign. There's story missions. I mean, I kind of figured that it was all, you know, just connected. You know, it doesn't. No, really there count. is a story mission with cutscenes and everything. Hmm. It's not you just randomly doing stuff. Because I had the impression, you know, it was just very MMO esque, and you're just always. Connected. I mean, obviously, there's el- there's yeah, there's MMO elements where you can run into people and do missions together, but like, no, there is. These main story missions where there's cutscenes and everything around it. Oh, okay. So yeah, there's like the story missions, and when you go do a story mission, you can do matchmaking. Hell, even when you're just walking around the city, you can do matchmaking. Even when I'm just walking around the city. Yeah, you don't even have to be in a mission. You can do matchmaking, so you can always make sure you're playing with somebody. So that's really nice. So you're not you're never alone in the world of the division. No, well, unless you want to be, I guess maybe. But why would you? Well, I don't. I don't know. I don't think you can play the game offline. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Can you pause the game? Maybe. I don't think I actually tried pausing it when I was playing it. Oh, great! It's just like Need for Speed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you, I don't know if you can play it offline. Cause I mean, here's the thing. When I was playing by myself in the closed beta, when I was doing like the main city area and I was walking to missions, I think, I mean, when you're at the main like base camp where you're like buying stuff and uh, getting missions or whatnot, there's a lot of people there, you know, other players. But like when I left the base camp and just started walking around the city, I really didn't run into anybody as I was doing that. I think I ran into maybe like one or two people in the main city. So that was weird. I don't know if it was because there just wasn't a lot of people on the beta at the time. Because this was like the first day of the beta. So maybe I just know if there wasn't a whole lot of people there. Or if that's just not the nature of that area of the game. You know? Ooh. So. Um, but then of course when you go to Dark Zone, that's a whole player versus player section. So there's a lot, like a lot of people in that section that are just other players. Um. So that's what that's that's one thing I want to see with the open beta. If like since it's open, everybody's gonna be playing. If I'm gonna be seeing more people in the city area, like just doing regular missions, you know. Oh yeah, that'd be neat. 
Um, because like I said, when I played my closed beta, I was just kind of playing by myself. Like I was doing all the story missions and the regular missions by myself. I wasn't running into anybody. But then when I went to Dark Zone, everybody was in the Dark Zone. You know, everyone's in the Dark Zone. Everyone's in the Dark Zone. Um, dark side. Yeah, dark and, side. And, but yeah. And, and, but yeah, I had a I had a, whole, I had a whole lot of fun with the Division beta. And like I said, just the opening beta is coming up, and I just don't want to feel like burnt out playing the um, the beta too much when the full game comes out. I'm, not, I'm kind of like just, oh, I'll do this again. Because your, your stats keep getting reset too, because they said whatever you did in the closed beta won't carry over into the open beta. So you have to restart your progress in the open beta. Oh man, so you can't go kick people's butts in the open beta? Yeah, and then obviously when the full game comes out, all your data resets again. So it's kind of like I don't want to keep replaying like the opening story missions and do well, all that too much. Yeah, from your perspective. But what about for someone like me who didn't get that uh, private beta access? Well, yeah, then good. If you haven't played it, then go play the open beta. You know, get your impressions of that. I'm just saying for someone like me who's already played it, and I don't, I'm not sure if I want to do it again and just kind of like. You know, I don't want to feel like I've already played enough of it or played enough of it to where when the game comes out, I'm like, oh, I already did this, you know. Mm. Don't feel like playing it again. Because, uh, you know, that, like we said, that's what happened with uh, Uncharted. It was like we played the multiplayer so much before the actual game came out that when the game came out, we were just like, that was it. Like, we, did, we didn't feel like playing the multiplayer, like, at all. Oh, yeah. I'm never going to forget that. I mean, like I said, yeah, I just played the first day because, like, Progress carried over, but then after that, I was just so, like, done. Because mm-hmm. we saw every environment we played. Not every, like, kind of mode, but we played, like, the basic modes that we just play. Yeah, exactly. We, so We played that a long time, yeah. And the, between the beta and the Subway multiplayer promotion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, it's just one of those situations where I don't want to kind of Burn out on it too soon by, by having played too much of it before release. Oh yeah, uh, that's why I didn't even touch on Charter Four beta. But but I mean that's the thing though. As I was playing the beta though, like there was so much of the game that was like locked out, you know. So it kind of left you know more for you to, ex- to experience once you actually get the game. Like um, like uh, like there's a whole crafting system and that was locked out in the beta. Um, like there was entire like uh, perks and skill trees that were completely locked out in the beta. Whoa. So, and some other stuff. So there's like there's there is still a lot there that's locked to where I haven't even touched it yet. You know. Oh, that's cool. So there's still a lot to look forward to in the full game. Um, but yeah, I'm really I'm really excited for this game. I, I really enjoyed the closed beta though. I'm yeah. excited for people to enjoy it. Yes, and the and the words positive and oh. from people online also playing playing the beta is positive. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, because it's a good game that people are uh, generally receiving it well. Yeah. I'm sure it's like quirks and kinks that, of course, you know, for beta's sake, that, of course, they have to point out for Ubisoft to iron out. But, you know, given the game's nature, you know, it's excusable. And then whatever PC stuff they're trying to figure out to fix, and they'll fix it. Yep. Yeah, it's, yep. Looking, it's looking good, man. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Ubisoft, man, picking, <laughs> picking up uh, Steam and... <laughs> Going forward, yeah, they are. I mean, maybe they did right by this game by delaying it. Then, yeah, make sure you guys run well. But um, speaking of Ubisoft, <laughs> Ubisoft announced a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, they did. Ubisoft's busy. They busy. Are. Well, well, what it was is that it was their like yearly earning call with investors. That's why they had to kind of talk mm-hmm. about a lot of the stuff. Yeah, openly. it's that time of year again. Yeah, that time mm-hmm. of year. Okay. Uh, one of the things they confirmed is that there will be no Assassin's Creed this year. No game. No Assassin's Creed. Nope. Which brings a question from a listener. Ooh. Who goes to the name of Colin. Mm-hmm. Not the pig. That Colin from the pig. farm. Colin from the farm. Hello from the farm, Colin. He says... Will Assassin's Creed taking a year off still have residence when it releases? Like, yes, <laughs> you know, t- it taking a year off. Yeah, I, I, I actually, you know, the easy answer, of course, is yes. No, I have yet. I, I would say yes, but there's some caveats. Mm. A little bit. 
And, and there's some factors that need to go into it in order for people to actually be excited for this game. Because, you know, I mean, uh, what was it? Syndicate was just hyped with really no fanfare, right? Like, you know, it didn't really have it showing at E3. Yeah. And, like, you know, I mean, it didn't have, like, really a preview cycle. Yeah, there was no preview cycle. There was no hype, like you said. And the sales were kind of low. But at least it was a well-received game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah, nothing against the game. I'm just saying, you know, people being excited was. Because, mm-hmm. you know, the Syndicate was like, no one cared. Well, I mean, people did, of course, but it wasn't, you know, grand or like grandiose due to the fact, you know, there was other blockbuster games coming out. Yeah. And then guess what? By the time when 2017 rolls around, same thing will probably happen again. Not, well, that's just what I'm assuming because, you know, you're going to have other blockbuster titles coming up that day too. Now... Uh, like I said, okay, so this Assassin's Creed title would probably be marketed with a lot of fanfare, uh, similar, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, uh, of it being equivalent to how Assassin's Creed 3 was marketed and hyped, Mm -hmm. uh, which we already expressed our, like our worries about that a little bit. Um, but you know, that's just how I imagine it going down, um, in terms of that. And then... If, you know, things are different from preview in the actual game, if it's a, if it's a good game, it's well-received, not just from critics, but also fans, then I think that will get people excited again about Assassin's Creed. So, like, I'm not sure if it's, like, an on-day release kind of thing. That's the difficult part. Um, maybe maybe it ta- all it takes is just, like, an E3 demo, similar to Assassin's Creed 3, you know, because Assassin's Creed 3, like, had a, had really good showings at trade shows and whatnot, so you know that's what sold it. So maybe if this particular Assassin's Creed that took it, that you know is brand new and has all these new things and whatnot, and irons out like maybe all the problems people have with the series and it just shows and it has, has a really good presence at like E3 or just like anything or just online, then maybe that will get people excited like day one. But uh, you know it's it's gonna really rely on something like that to happen. Because it, it just, you know, the way Assassin's Creed has been marketed for at least the past two years, it's not going to cut it. So, you know, th- this one is just going to have to, you know, it's going to be e- AC3 style a little bit uh, in terms of marketing and how they put the game out there. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing you got to think about. You know, by them confirming that there is no Assassin's Creed this year, that pretty much confirms that that other thing is real, too. That oh, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> that the next Assassin's Creed is coming out the next year and it's gonna be like a reboot kind of and it's gonna be like be in Egypt and there's gonna be a big overhaul of what the game yeah. is, you know? Right. Yeah. So I mean that's exciting. You know, we already talked yeah. about this, you know, how exciting this sounds, you know, have a exactly, yeah. you know, a huge kind of you know, revision of the game. Um I'm just yeah. concerned, you know, that's exciting for other people. Um, I'd hope so. Oh, like for anyone that has been like dropped off to the series, like hypothetically, like let's say people who have it, like played Unity, were like burned by it, or like in some kind of way, not just due to technical things, or maybe they just didn't like the game at all, and then didn't even bother with Syndicate. It's just like you know they see this one, it's just like, eh. I mean, yeah. it, like, well, they care. I mean, it's, yeah, it, I, I think it's going to take a lot though. I mean, yeah, and that's hopefully what we're going to get from this game. It is a lot. I hope so. Um, mm, yeah, because I mean, they kind of need this hook to it. Where like you look at something like Assassin's Creed Four Black Flag. I mean, we love that game because guess yeah. what? It tried to be different. Yeah, this is, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, the core gameplay when you're on land and stuff is Assassin's Creed, but there's just so much cool pirate stuff to do when you're on the boat, you know, and doing all that is just so good and fun, and it feels different. You know, it feels fresh. Still got some of that Assassin's Creed elements that people love, but it, you still get all these brand new elements that are awesome. You know. And, oh, yeah. so it's and Syndicate would have been better received. Not Syndicate. Um, mm-hmm. Unity would have been better received, obviously, if it didn't have the the buggy launch because the big hook of that the game. The reason, yeah. yeah, the buggy launch. But I mean, the big hook of that game, and the reason the I bought way. it was the multiplayer because the multiplayer was fun, you know, when you were playing with your friends and doing those co op missions. Um, you know, it had a troubled PC port and then, you know, just brought bugs in the console versions, you know. Yeah. And, down. and that was just the thing. Like, Black Flag's big hook was, oh, look, all this pirate stuff, and it's really fun. Syndicate's hook was, hey, look, you can play these missions with your friends. But Syndicate was just, there was no hook to it, you know? Nope. 
There was nothing. It was just kind of like, okay, it's an assassin. I mean, Creed. yeah, it had the female assassin, but it had the female assassin. Uh, but, main, but, yeah, main playable like in a core Assassin's Creed game. I yeah, should say. So, but I mean, they were like, oh, this Syndicate game. It has no multiplayer. It has no boat combat. It has, you know, it's like we're going back to basics. And I'm like, okay, that's fine, but I don't really care for the basics. I want like the big concepts. Yeah, you know? and then like not saying you know quantity over quality, but uh, the map was smaller yeah. than like yeah. any of the And I mean, and that was the thing. I mean, it worked. But, I mean, at least critically, like it was a well received game because it did become focused. And the fans enough. enjoyed it. The fans enjoyed it, but for someone like me who's not big into the franchise, I do want these big hooks. You know, I want something big to bring my attention in, and I think that's what they're going for with this next Assassin's Creed game. That's Rumored to be called Assassin's Creed Empire, but that may change because that was the thing with Assassin's Creed Victory and it became Syndicate, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, with this type of, with this tentatively titled Assassin's Creed Empire, if it is this huge thing, that's what they're going to go for. People like us who are like need this extra big hook to kind of be pulled back into it, you know. Um, you know, like they say, going for that Witcher feel with this game. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, the question is. Is it gonna be as dense as the witch? Yeah, we'll see. Like um, where you won't be able to beat it. Oh yeah, it just goes on <laughs> until nine months after release. <laughs> <laughs> and then the DLC content comes in, and you're just like, oh, more. I'm like, I gotta get to the so thing. much. But um, yeah, and then I mean, even with the even with the game not coming out this year, I mean, obviously, Assassin's Creed is still gonna be relevant this year, um, because. Uh, well, yeah, the movie because the movie's coming uh, out. The movie's coming out in December, and that's probably gonna be heavily marketed and try to what's make. What's the hook to that one? Michael yeah. Fassman. Michael Fassman. <laughs> uh, so I mean, the movie's gonna be coming out. I think they're gonna Fox is gonna try their hardest to make that into like a big event thing. Um, oh yeah, I mean, I'm excited, like especially the, the movie's good. Yeah, so that's coming out, and then they're also putting out. I mean, they're still putting out Assassin's Creed Chronicles this year, which is like the 2D thing. Yeah. So, well, uh, I, I don't think that's doing it. I mean, they're taking the basically the most fan requested locales and just not even trying. basically doing anything. They're like, "Oh, you always wanted to be an assassin yeah. in China. Well, now here's a right? 2D platformer." And I'm like, "What?" It's ridiculous. It's, it's the dumbest thing. I mean, like, okay, like I like I like 2D platformers. Don't get me wrong, but like this is just ridiculous. Yeah. But it's coming to the Vita. <laughs> there is the Vita version. Assassin's Creed on Vita again? Again? Ooh. What? So. And not the remote play. Like, there is a Vita version you can go buy for this. Yeah, no, Ubisoft supporting the Vita? Crazy. Well, I mean, they did put out Child of the Light. Yeah. No Valiant Hearts, though. No Valiant Hearts. That's weird, though. But Yeah, and thus we get an iOS version of Valiant Hearts. But no PS Vita version. Can you believe that? Oh, we get there's a lot of iOS ports. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 I know. But you know, Valiant Hearts kind of got me a little bit. I'm like, this would be a great Vita game. Yeah, but um, anyway, but also Ubisoft announced in their reports and all that stuff. They said that they have a slew of big AAA games planned for their uh, fiscal year, um, confirming that both that Watch Dogs Two, For Honor, and South Park: The Fractured But Whole will come out before. March 31st, 2017. So before that date, those three big games will be released. Oh, so they're really setting forth for South Park. Yeah, because South Park, we haven't heard anything about this game since the little teaser thing at uh, E3. And or For like, Honor, for that matter. Or For Honor, but didn't they do a closed beta or something for that game recently? I don't know. I haven't even been following that one much lately anyway. I've been following it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, basically confirming too that Watch Dogs 2 will probably come out in the fall because Ubisoft is going to need something big to fill the void of Assassin's Creed. Um, of this year? Yeah, because I mean, well, it just says it just says that these three games will be out before the thirty March thirty first of two thousand seventeen. So Watch Dogs two could come out like in November of twenty sixteen. I hope so. Because, I mean, Ubisoft kind of needs something big for the fall, you know? Yeah, they don't really have it. I mean, well, the Just Dance games, but that's not good enough. Yeah, they need the big AAA thing yeah. for the fall. 
Um, South Park will probably, I mean, South Park will probably come out maybe in March because that's when the first one came out. They all did well at that time. And did well at that time, so it's just one of the things where they kind of want to keep it in that release schedule. Um, and then For Honor, I don't know. It's gonna be January. It'll be January, maybe. Um, now South Park, different developer. Right? Yeah, it's not through uh, Obsidian. Yeah, it's not through Obsidian. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, because it's a different situation. Because like when the first one was in development, it was through it was developed by Obsidian and published by THQ, but then THQ went under. And development kind of halted or it continued onward until someone picked it up and Ubisoft picked it up and they let it develop some more. And now the new ones from the start, Ubisoft. So obviously they got one of their developers working on it. We'll see how that one turns out. Yeah, I mean, they already had a great foundation with the first game. And they, they, that's what that's why that's what the creators of the game, the show said afterwards. They were just kind of like, you know, we made this game and turned out really good, and we just thought to ourselves, you know what, we can make it even better. So that's kind of what inspired them to do the second game. Oh, I like that. Because that's what they said after the first one. They're like, I don't know if we want to do another game. It just took so long and it was hard. But then they kind of just got the inspiration of like, yeah, we can make it even better. So, you know, improving upon that and uh, making a sequel. Because I'm really looking forward to this because I love the first game. So. It must have been quite the name to say at an investor's call. Pressure butthole, yeah. Well, whatever <laughs> strikes her fancy with those investors. Whatever strikes her fancy, yep. Anyways, and Anyways. as for Watch Dogs 2, you know, just good. I mean, yeah. we've already stated about what we want with Watch Yeah, we, we, did a, we did a thing a few episodes back, what we want in Watch Dogs 2. Yeah, we just don't want to reach out ground, but we've already discussed about, like, Watch Dogs 2. Or... Yeah, what we want. Um, Do we have any more viewer mail? Do we? Where are we now? Oh, we are two minutes over the one hour mark. Uh, how many more do we have already? Oh Thank no, I'm done with news. Nothing else. Nope. I kind of got through um, what I wanted to news wise. Uh, this we had one from Aaron, and I don't know if it's he or she because this guy had a girl name. But they say for hello anonymous. They, uh, they say uh, thoughts on the recent uh, game trailers closure because uh, game trailers as a website closed down. Oh, I didn't even know this. See, that, that's how without notice you don't know either. I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't really. Yeah, I don't really go to gametrailers.com. The only time they really are relevant to me is like. During E3 stuff, you know, and they always like game trailers premieres, you know. Well, I stopped going to the website in 2012, and that's when they kind of had the major shakeup, mm-hmm. and they never, they never kept up with like the YouTube game. They were always so set on you know staying on their own website, their own website, yeah. Because you know, GameSpot, IGN, uh. You know, they they bit the bullet and just, like, you know, we'll also go to YouTube. The game yeah. trailers decided not to. And I just think part of that, you know, attributed to the fact, you know, that just, you know, closed down. And I'm sure the Alexa rating on it went down drastically ever since 2012. I mean, I stopped going to it after 2012. Yeah, I mean, it uh, always sucks when you see something closed down because obviously people lose their jobs and they got to go, you know, find something else. Well, and the fact that this one was so short, short notice, mm-hmm. and I believe it was so weird because I think one of like the heads of Game Trailers was actually out on a honeymoon while this happened. <laughs> so um, I'm sure maybe they saw it coming, but I mean, it's kind of strange that it was just kind of like all of a sudden, uh, just the way it happened. No, no, really, like warning. Mm-hmm. Uh, then especially you know it happened like in early February so maybe like something in January would have been nice at least like in the new year but uh, it's not surprising at all I mean I, I kind yeah. of figured maybe the sites uh, yeah I mean uh, ratings I mean, were low. yeah I mean I get I, like I said I get I get what they're going for because that was what that was the, that was their thing we're game trailers like we play video content and announce games and show you game trailers and videos stuff like that so they wanted it to be their own content but i mean that's just not how the market is right now like you need to provide your content through youtube 
or Twitch or something because people want all their content in one location, you know? Yeah, or a couple. But yeah, but just, you know, people are tired of the uh, proprietary video players' uh, websites. I mean, I'm, I get tired of it. Like, if I have to, like, even just, like, watch, like, a one or two minute news story video, like, on ABC or CNN, or I don't know why I would be watching CNN, but, uh, you know, just any of those proprietary video players are just very. Uh, people just don't like them. Uh, you know, there's YouTube Red now. You can watch videos without ads. And, you know, there's always ads in those. I mean, there's ads with reason in those uh, websites. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, you know, I, I think people are fed up with them. And I kind of am too. So uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, I had many memories of game trailers. So I watched them since uh, 2007. Uh, beforehand too. I mean, yeah, the E3 stuff, you know, since I watched, started watching E3, like, religiously in 2008 uh i watched like a couple e3s from game trailers i think and then by then i just started watching them just like on twitch now but uh and then you know angry video game nerd uh watched stuff from screw attack so much great content there i mean it's all on youtube now <laughs> so you know that stuff is not going to go away and some of that stuff is still going on to this day so you know nothing is really lost there so, uh, it's just, you know, just the core of the company is gone. And uh, that's disappointing. Uh, you know, just another hit in the traditional uh, games press now. Uh, yeah, cause, I mean, game trailers are gone. G4 yeah, is gone. Yeah, uh, gone. Yeah. What is it? Gamer Pro is gone. Uh, yeah, Game Pro. Game Pro. Know. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while since I did the Game Pro. So I'm cool. uh, so going to throw a car in there. Um, so... You know, it spills for something different, you know. I mean, people who strive out there maybe to, like, work in that kind of industry might need to rethink it. Didn't didn't Joystick close down, too? Joystick.com? Yeah. yeah. Joystick's closed down. I mean, Kotaku's still up. Uh, I mean, they're not... Kotaku's not really showing any signs of slowing down. I mean, if anything, they get they're getting even more than before. Uh, I mean, I don't have numbers, but it's it's been seeming like they've been any more popular. Um I mean, it's, it's just such a different landscape now. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I just worry for those people that kind of aspire to be because, you know, times, you know, times change, you know, just like with any other kind of job, you know, that too. But, you know, for this in particular, you know, you're able to see it more clearly and it's just, you know, uh, a little scary. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and then uh, just... Uh, 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 and then just another thing of note, probably with our sister shows, along with Dave Space, that uh, apparently some of the Rock Band exports are already up. Uh, Lego Rock Band, Rock Band 2, and ACDC are up on Xbox, unfortunately. But probably, yeah, I know. But soon, probably on the PS4. But they just you got me. all of you a got, sudden, you, I know. You got me excited. I was about to go I, turn on my PlayStation. I know, I know. I'm sorry. But I mean, I at least give you a heads up but th that they're coming. But, yeah, currently they're already on Xbox One right now. Um, but uh, Harmonix hasn't really given an ETA on PS4, but they say soon. And God knows what soon is. I mean, well, God really does know what soon is. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. They'll probably talk about that on Living Room Clutter this week. I mean, I don't believe uh, they really have Xbox One to test those songs out. But, I mean, I'm sure they just play the same and it doesn't really matter. But, I mean, I'm excited for that. Um, so yeah, I believe that's about it oh. for episode 50. Super Bowl 50 was this past weekend and PSBS 50 is this week. So two golden, golden. golden episode. Yeah. Huh. That was it for viewer mail though. We have one more. Uh, one more, one more, one more. Oh, um, Joel. Joel. It's um, weird yeah. that our viewers are na are like have the names of like popular video game characters. Aaron is Aaron from the Aaron? Is there Aaron in a video game? There's an Aaron on The Walking Dead, but he's not in the video game. Mm, I don't know. But Joel, Anyways. Colin, we had Duck, not Duck, Doug. No, but we never had Duck. We did have a Doug. Yeah, we have a Doug, but I thought his name was Duck. Oh hell no. 
But um, anyway, yeah. What was the question? Anyways, the question is, are any of you planning to play Firewatch? Okay. Um, I have it. You have it already? Yes, I. Well, it came out Tuesday. Uh, yeah, and the first week discount, right? Yeah, so I bought it, and I started playing it, and I haven't finished it yet. Um, Because I don't want to rush it, you know, take my time with it. I played for about... Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not like there's ever going to be a Firewatch 2. I don't know. Firewatch 2, they said this. Um, so it's like, you know, it's a one of a kind. And no DLC. No DLC. So, um, yeah, so I'm taking my you, time with it. I played it for an you hour. You enjoying it so far, though? Yes, very much so. Um, Because... I don't want to go into too much detail. Uh, well, it could be later, yeah. It could be later. I might go into more detail later. But, like, just within the first five minutes, there, there's just so much. There's just, like, the opening is not what I expected it to be. Ooh. And um, it, it was just, like, like, just the first five minutes are emotional and gives you so much, like, backstory information. I was just like, wow, I didn't really expect that, you know. And it's presented in such a simple way, but it gets to you, you know. And really sets up the game that you're about to play. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, really, I'm really liking it. I just love the kind of, you know, kind of calm nature of it for the most part. But like little, you know, moments of mystery and just kind of keep you going. Intrigue. Intrigue, yeah. Keep you going and just. Um, one thing I found a little odd, though, and I got used to it as it goes, but the controls are a little weird. <laughs> like. I mean, the basic movement is what you expect. Analog sticks, press X to pop over things and interact. But, like, the controls are weird the way you use the walkie-talkie. So, you press L2 to hold the walkie-talkie. And then you press R2 to highlight different dialogue options. And then you highlight the one you want. And then you select it by letting go of L2. Huh. So, it's really weird like to say it out loud. But, like, when you're playing it, you start getting it you know because it's supposed to be like you actually operating a walkie talkie you know a walkie talkie like holding the button and then letting go to talk you know mm-hmm. so that was a little odd for me at first trying to like get that down because you're going to be doing it a lot <laughs> you know talking on the walkie talkie yeah. so um, that was a little odd but uh, you get used to it and it's just kind of a little, it's just a little neat different way of uh, doing dialogue trees because you know so many games have it so it is neat when a game finds a you kind of a new different way to approach it Mm-hmm. So, there's that. Um, like I said, I haven't finished yet, so maybe I'll go into more overall impressions once I have it finished. So, we'll see. But I'm, like I said, really enjoying uh, what I've played so far of it. Man, and as for me, I mean, you know, like I say, my situation's already tough. So, I mean, I love to play Firewatch. It's definitely a game I'm interested in, but it's just, uh, I mean, I'm not home. And, uh, yeah, it just stinks. I don't know. I'm probably not going to get to it anytime soon. But maybe someone else I can call up uh, might be into it. I might have already beaten it or has been into it. So maybe uh, you can get someone on that soon. Just like, or Firewatch spoiler cast. It's like, uh, could me If there's a demand for it. We'll see. Anyways, Anyways. that concludes Vero Mail. For this week. Oh, we're out of your mail. Okay. Yeah, that is it. So, yeah, so that's it. So, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, this wasn't the huge grand spectacle episode 50 we, we kind of maybe teased or wanted, but it's still an episode and it's a good one. We got some news, got some viewer mail. Um, you know, um, you know, like I said, 50 is a lot. You know, we don't, Obviously, we're not putting really almost any money into it. We're not really getting any money out of it. We're just doing this because we like to do it. You know, we just... Oh, yeah. With the next 50, um, you know, um, I'm going to look into other ways. Uh, you know, Dave has already been a great help. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Probably with our iTunes our, versions. I know. That expands the audience greatly. Yes. Um, you know, and if you have been listening through all 50 episodes plus our bonus episodes uh thank you um you know we really appreciate that because you know us putting these out every week like i said to you know not every every ratings aren't too high or it's off because you know youtube doesn't know how to count uh no 
Google doesn't know how to count. Yeah, because we we've had episodes that get over a hundred views, but they reset because YouTube just doesn't like us. Yeah, I mean, just lately it's been. I mean, oh my goodness, I've even been detached from like even like my PSN friends. So you know, it's been. I haven't really heard any updates if they've been listening, and I hopefully they have. Um, you know, of course, I thank them as well if they are. Mm-hmm. Well, it doesn't matter. Even if they took a listen to one episode, it doesn't matter. But oh, yeah, if you listen, to, even if you listen to one whole episode, we think one. that's over an hour of listening to us talk, you know. Um, uh-huh. But, you know, we try to make all this as easy as possible for you because obviously we put these things on YouTube. YouTube is the first place you're going to see it. You know, if you want yeah. it's going to be. And just, iTunes just helps. And then I guess helps. for the people, um, Android. I mean, I can't really say YouTube Red's an option, but I mean, you know. I don't know. I don't know if there's a, it, yeah, I don't know if there's a workaround to get iTunes I, podcasts on Android phones. Oh, or, oh, I don't believe. Um, you know, just get the MP3 file, really, and just yeah, get you can do that. Phone. Um, uh, but yeah, it's pretty simple. But yeah, I mean, I enjoy doing this too, and you know, even though it's difficult for me to play many of these games that will come out within the next uh, couple of months. Uh, like I said, I mean, I'm going to put out the initiative out there, really put out an initiative out there to get people that are going to play big games like The Division and uh, whatever else is coming out uh, to talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, we didn't, didn't even have anybody to really give any perspective on The Witness, which was a pretty big game, but... Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't gotten any inquiries about the witness yet, so um, you know, so that isn't anything that has been raising an alarm to talk about. Um, mm-hmm. Because you know, and, and like I said, like you just pick us, and you know, we're probably not going to talk about the witness, but you know, there's other people out there that are talking about the witness. So I'm sure you get enough about the witness already. I mean, we talked about that you get sick from playing it, but I wonder <laughs> if it's patched already. Uh, so. Yeah, so yeah, uh, it's going to be important for me to put that initiative out there to, for uh, me to step out in an episode or two and just uh, have people talk about um, games mm-hmm. that you've been playing yeah. and that are new. Yeah, because ultimately we, well, we we just don't want it to be too one-sided, you know, when we talk yeah, about exactly. games. Yeah, because that, it happened like a little bit like with the division. Yeah, it happened uh, a lot because like I played the division beta, you haven't. That was one thing where I'm yeah. kind of like the only one with an opinion on it. I'm the only one with an opinion on Firewatch right now. Um, oh. But then there's been times where you've talked about Life is Strange and I haven't played it, and it's just kind of like you know. Yeah, I mean you know that's just a different uh, boat. I mean that was an adventure game that had come out well uh, mostly before I had moved out. Uh, and then, you know, I mean, it was difficult for me to get to the final episode because, you know, by then I'd already moved out and I wanted to play it at home. And, you know, that took a while. Uh, same with Tales of Borderlands. Uh, you know, those are just, like, simple adventure games. So, like, I couldn't really get to, like, big releases like Call of Duty Black Ops 3 or Fallout 4 last year. So that's what made it a bit difficult to play those games. So, uh, yeah, more than ever, we're going to put out the initiative to find more people to talk about games it's gonna make it more involved so then i'm not just here just to give perspective on news as much as i love that because i at my core i still love to play games of course it's just under my circumstance of being at school and then having what i have here it's it it, it makes it extremely difficult so unless uh remote play comes to mac soon which uh seems uh likely and soon maybe so You know, there's hope there. I mean, if, you know, rem- when remote play comes to Mac, there's hope. Uh, yeah, there is hope there to play just, you know, n- not too online heavy games on there. Because uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'd be playing a division on a remote play. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, on the Mac, I mean, you know, I would be able to use my PlayStation controller. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's online on top of an online connection. Mm hmm. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know, man. Anyways. Something like Firewatch would be great, though. Something like Firewatch would be fine. Yeah. Or like, hell, any of the Telltale games. Uh, something single-player based. Rock Band's not going to work. I mean, I don't think you can even role-play Rock Band. Uh, or anything like that. So, I don't mm-hmm. know. Anyways. But anyways. Um, 
but yeah, that's, a, yeah. I mean, those are great points that like you said. Uh, looking for people with opinions on games, you know, that we may or may not get around to ourselves. Um, so, I mean, if you want to inquire about that, or if you have any questions for the show, I mean, look, we've answered uh, a couple of questions here on the show. Uh, uh, you know, reading them and answering them, getting to that. Because uh, if you want to send us questions, there's many ways you can do so. You can message us directly on PSN at Buy You Boys or at Double Is. Um, you can comment directly on the YouTube video. You can uh, message the YouTube channel. Um, what else? There is a Facebook fan page you can go to, uh, which we still getting likes on that, which is nice. Starting to build up likes on that. Um, you can go like that, uh, send messages or comments or whatnot. Uh, we have a Twitter, but I haven't been touching that. I don't know if you have. Yep. That's why I tweeted about, uh, the Division. Yeah, you tweeted that. Yeah, we did have a Division live stream. Uh, I don't know how many of you got around to seeing that. Uh, a few. Yeah, we had, like, five people at one point watching. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we do have a Twitter. You can go check that out. You can message us on that, too, if you have any questions. Um, but, uh. Yeah, then obviously to watch the show, I mean, there's YouTube, which you might be listening to right now, or of course there's the iTunes MP3 version, but the YouTube version will always be the first version available for listening. Um, hmm. Yeah. And then of course the iTunes version is brought to you by DigSpace.com, uh, Living Room Clutter and uh, Character Crunch. Hopefully I got that hmm. right this time. I didn't want to mix the titles together again. All oh, don't you dare mix <laughs> Want that serial podcast? Oh, Dave liked that idea, by the way. Oh, the serial podcast. You heard it? Yeah, he was really he was really interested in it. <laughs> I did. I'm see. like, oh, no, what were you gonna, gonna say? say? No, no, no. Oh, no, I was gonna say I, I did see that Batman vs Superman serial at, at the store the other day. Yeah, you saw it. Mm-hmm. It was in a really <laughs> nice box. It's like a textured box, like the like the Bat logo is like actually textured and leveled over the box. You best go buy it now. Yeah, buy. I'm gonna collect it. I'm gonna like store it away. I'm gonna be like, uh, what's his name? Quentin Tarantino collects cereal boxes. Do me like that. He does that. Uh, well, I don't know if he collects a lot of them, but there is this one particular cereal box he like has a kid and he kept it and he uses it as a prop in the background of his movies. So like, yeah. So like, like there's a scene in like Pulp Fiction or something where the guy's eating cereal and there's a box on the uh, table and that's that mm-hmm. is his that is Quentin Tarantino's box of cereal that he's been having since a kid. Does it like fit in with the timeline of like where the when the movie takes place? Nope, that was just his favorite cereal as a kid and he likes to highlight it in his movies. Uh, that's weird. <laughs> Anyways, anyway, let's just, <laughs> let's uh, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. So with all that. This has been the PSBS Place and Bullseye Podcast, episode 50. I'm your host, Coach TPS and Bible. My co host here is. Andrew Reedus, Double Is. Everyone have a good week. Be happy. Be safe. Uh, don't stress out too much about things. I don't know. Lately, people around me have been stressing out too much about things. <laughs> Silly things. You know, um, go- well, things, some things are understandable that you would get stressed out over, but don't, yeah. don't let things take you over. <laughs> Yep. Play video games to the best of your ability, unlike mm-hmm. me. Um, that's about it. Yep. <laughs> well, yep. Have fun. Go play your Firewatch. Go play some double XP on Star's Battlefront. Um, go see Deadpool this week. Yeah, go see Deadpool. Have your fun. I'm going excited. We're going to go see it, hopefully, sometime. Yeah. Have your fun. Go see Deadpool. Um, mm-hmm. Go eat some Batman vs. Superman cereal. And watch the any last good. Trailer. Go watch the new trailer, maybe. Oh my god, uh, uh, you won't regret it. It'll make you a believer. <laughs> will yes, you believe? You will. <laughs> you will. You're not. You're. If you had hesitancy after that last trailer, now which I can understand by, but this one is like that should have been the the, the last one that should have been released. Yeah. Well, it is the last one that's released, but you know what I mean. It should that one should have been. Should have been the one that they released previously. Yes, and and should have been, and this should have been the last one. So yeah, so. Uh, oh my god! Just but yeah. I'm so excited. All right, let's go. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so yeah, this has been the PSBS. Uh, thanks for listening, and hopefully, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, Click.